Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this afternoon, we have Stacy, who's going to speak to us on what it's like um, to be with a process tech role, how she came into that role, and what are um, some highlights each day, what are some pros, what are some cons, and how has COVID impacted her daily work routine? Thank you so much, Stacy, for joining us. Oh, one thing before we do begin, I'd ask that anybody who has questions or feedback, please put them in the chat box. That way she can address them and um, uh, just ensure that your mics are muted. Thank you once again. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Stacy Clazel. It's nice to be with you guys. Um, today I'll talk to you a little bit about my career that I'm actually retired from, but I spent uh, 20 years with Dow Chemical working as a process technician. And currently, I actually work with Victoria College teaching students to become process technicians. But I'll, I'll focus on the, the role as a process technician and my experience with that. So um, focusing on that, that job role, um, whether it be Dow Chemical or surrounding local industries that um, hire in that field or in Vista, uh, DuPont, I think DuPont and Dow are now the same company. Uh, we have in, um, Formosa, and I was just trying to think that we have like five or six different companies here in close proximity that offers these positions. And it's just a, a really fabulous career opportunity working for these companies because they offer great benefits and there are just there are a lot of opportunities within this field as well. Um, I chose this field because I actually have a degree in, in business administration from Victoria College and UHB. And after I received that degree, I started looking for a job in the area. And um, after spending four years of college, I wanted to work for a, a good, sound, large company and make good and make good salary and have opportunities. And that was somewhat limited back when I was looking a little over 20 years ago for those opportunities to really make a good salary and have some um, work for a big company with opportunities. So I had um, met some folks that had spent most of their career out at the chemical plants and they were really excited about their job and had nothing but good things to say about it. So I wanted to investigate a, a bit further. So I took a um, a career um, class through Victoria College as well. It was a, just a certificate for process operations. So I went through that twice a week on nights for 12 weeks. So I would, was able to explore what that job entailed and to see if that was would be a good fit to try to pursue that job. And after going through the class, I really enjoyed it. It was not something I had really ever considered before because I just thought, saw myself in an office, dressed nice every day, um, and not actually out in a field working with equipment. Uh, and after learning more, I thought, oh no, I think I could do this. I'm really interested in the mechanics of how some of this equipment works and the, on the side of the process itself, the chemistry that's involved in making the different products and how those raw, raw materials goes, go into everyday products. If you're working in a plastics, uh, processing unit, you're making plastics, then you look around you in your car or just wherever you are right now, you can probably look around, look at your phone. There's plastic components in everything that you can see all around you. And that all comes from a chemical process, developing raw, raw chemicals from the earth, uh, gases and, and uh, raw petrochemicals from the ground into what becomes plastics. And on the chemical side, when you end up with a chemical product, that goes into detergents and uh, various cleaning supplies and just a range of things, even into when it's further refined and further uh, chemically processed into shampoos and different soaps and just a, an array of things. So it's really interesting when I started learning more about it, to be part of something on the ground level that ends up in products that we use and see every day. So I was interested. So I, I started applying. And at that time, the what was required 
to, to be able to pursue this job was either at least 30 hours of college credit or two years of experience. So at that time, I didn't have the experience, but I did have a degree. And then I had this 12, 12 week certification. So that helped a lot while I was applying for some various companies. And it was at the time Union Carbide that I was able to uh, receive a job offer. So now it's the Dow, Dow Chemical location out at Sea Drift. So I worked there I guess, for 20, 20 years. And I really enjoyed my time there. I uh, was able to get in at, at that position that would be considered a ground level position. And you can spend 30, 40 years and retire as a technician or operator as people are a little bit more familiar with in this area. And that's a, a great job. You won't get bored. There's always things to learn, opportunities, but there are also a lot of opportunities if you want to explore. And, and uh, if you learn your job well and do a, a, a good job in that, in that field of operations, you can, uh, if you have the interest, you may want to move into the safety department, you may want to move into um, the, the lab, be a lab technician where you run samples and check for product quality. There's um, where you don't have to be a maintenance technician, you might get into a maintenance role where you help facilitate day-to-day -day maintenance from the area that you worked in. So there's a lot of opportunities. Uh, what I didn't start with was the process technology, process technician job is a shift job. And I'm not sure or not aware of any companies in our area where it's not a shift job. So you do work days and nights, and those are 12 hour days or 12 hour nights, rotating schedules. But there are opportunities, if that's not where, what you see yourself doing for the rest of your life, there are some opportunities to, for some day positions. And after 10 years in operations, while I still enjoyed operations and still liked my job, as a, I, started my family and had some young children, I, I did want the opportunity to try to work days. So I had, um, I didn't really want to pursue uh, the lab technician role or which at that time was, as, was only offered in my area as a, road, a shift job as well, or the safety department, not at that time. I was actually had an opportunity to apply as a, a tech advisor and that, job was a day position, but I was still day-to-day -day operations in the chemical unit that I was familiar with and that I had trained in. So I was able to still do the job that I loved, the day-to-day -day operations and making the product. But then I had the opportunity to work on projects and work with engineers, and it was just, you know, just a, a fabulous opportunity. Um, the last five years I was there, I was in a job role called a work process coach. And at Dow, they don't even have that position anymore. But that was just, uh, again, working with operations, day staff, engineers, uh, safety folks, and all of the processes that get your work done. How you put a work order in, how you uh, put a maintenance request in, or um, prepare the unit for maintenance. Start the unit up, shut the unit down, everything had a process. So. And so from time to time, there would be changes. So I was, uh, would train and kind of facilitate uh, training on changes in those work processes. But again, I still had my, all of my experience uh, in the unit that I still worked in and would still get to you know, be in on a project or get uh, be able to consult with some of the things on a day-to-day -day basis. And that was my love, you know. Working with people and work processes was fine, but I really liked the equipment and the chemistry of making these products, which kind of leads me a little bit more to, you know, what does it entail to get the job? What I told you was what it took 20 plus years ago, the 30 college credit hours or two years experience nowadays. And I'm going to speak in general because that changes from company to company and uh, over time right now, companies really prefer a two year degree in, in process technology, and that's offered at Victoria College. Um, it, within just two years, you can get an associate's degree in process technology. They also offer a certificate, and some of the companies will hire off of the certificate. 
and that certificate um, you can get in less than two years and it just focuses on the process technology courses the program courses so then you're not getting your english or your math or your sciences so you're not getting a full associate's degree you're just getting a certificate specific to the, the program courses and that's introduction to press process technology you have an there's a good equipment class a systems class and you get a, a couple of safety classes industrial processes and then uh, there's a fabulous lab and if it wasn't in the process of being moved right now my original thought was to actually record this from the the lab so that you could see some equipment at least on a small scale and uh, maybe even demonstrate something so maybe in the future that will be something that you could actually see uh, if we have another one of these opportunities to do a career exploration to actually film that in the lab so you can see a little bit about what is offered from a degree standpoint, what hands-on training you get, and then to realize that on a much bigger scale, that's what you'd actually be working with. So now the two-year degree or um, a certificate, two-year degree is preferred. And then depending on which company, some companies will hire off of experience as well. You know, not every, they keep, they, there's really not a, enough uh, graduates from the program to fill all the need in our area. So that's good that we have a need of uh, job opportunities for folks, you know, folks retiring, folks moving on to other things, or maybe transferring out of that technician role into another role. So there's, there's a good opportunity for employment in this field as well in our area. So um, that three to five years experience, depending on the company. And um, I'm not sure with the experience if they require any college credit hours. I'm just not uh, familiar with what the companies actually require, but experience or education. Of course, they'd prefer both, right? Um, you see, I'm looking at my notes just to make sure I don't skip any information that I wanted to cover with you guys. And if you have a question while I'm, while I'm speaking, I think I'll be able to see it on the screen pop up, but feel free to, to type uh, any questions as we go. I'm explaining what the job entails. Uh, this process technician job or operator's job, said so it's a rotating shift. It's not uh, just an inside job and it's not just an outside job out in the elements. But it does have both sides and typically when you first start the job so when you, when you start the job you, you learn your outside equipment first and you actually train on that so um, that entails if you're familiar at all uh, some very large equipment large rotating equipment compressors and pumps and large towers that are very tall sometimes you work on the ground level sometimes you have to climb up to higher levels so you can't be scared of heights and you've got to be willing to work outdoors in the elements so whether that's a very cold day in the middle of december or 99 degrees or 100 degrees plus in the middle of july you've got to be open and willing to work under those conditions outside uh, that the physical ability just to be able to climb, to be able to uh, walk up stairs to different platforms and maybe even climb up one of those stairways on a, uh, to a platform, can't be afraid of heights and can't be unwilling to work outdoors in the elements. So those two things and pretty much the equipment, you get training. You don't have to come in as a mechanic. You don't have to come in knowing every detail, even going through the program you'll learn more once you're out on the job specific to that equipment and specific to that process and what chemicals are involved and, and how they react and how they uh, form the different products. So you get a lot of on the job training too, very specific to what area you're working in. And then once you've got some outside experience, you get to actually learn how to run the process indoors on a computer system and what I, I like to tell students too, if you can, once they actually get to see the lab and see the equipment, but you're working on a 
huge computer program that's kind of like a big, uh, not too much into gaming, but kind of like a uh, you know online game or or your. <laughs> I'm so bad at this because I don't don't play any type of computer games. But anyway, the uh, it's a big big system and it's all computer interaction and you get to actually see a visual of your equipment outside on an inside computer screen and you're making your changes to flows and pressures and temperatures and uh, different flow rates of different raw materials and how they're you see feedback on the reaction and, and how the process variables come back that you see everything in real time so definitely not a game but you work within parameters and you know your highs and your lows and where you have to run everything to make a good on spec good quality product that you can sell to customers it's just all very interesting it's probably a, a little nerdy because i i think it's so interesting um uh, i'm not i know that's not going to give you all the details of the job but on day-to-day -day basis if you're working outside you have routine duties you're checking all of your equipment checking process variables that you can see outside on gauges uh, that give you some of those temperatures and flows and pressures. Then on the inside, you see everything on a computer screen and it's all animated to a certain extent as you would see it in the field and you could see your changes in real time. It's, it's really, to me, fascinating and interesting. And you can learn um, you know, so much more on the job and so much more about the chemistry to the point where you can be an asset to the company and even get the opportunities to work on projects as an operator or a technician. You can get opportunities to travel to other places to learn more or to work on projects and startups and even out country. You know, it's kind of the sky's the limit is what what you put into the job is what you're going to get out of the job and what your personal goals are is usually what you can accomplish. Happy day to day and stay in Cedar of Texas for the rest of my life and be a technician. There's nothing wrong with that. If you want some opportunities for uh, for growth or for some trying new things, they, they definitely have that as well. Um, being a, a female in a male dominated environment, it presents some challenges, but I was very, very fortunate to always have good experiences with the, the folks that I worked with. There are very few female technicians versus uh, male in our area that I hired into there was one other female operator in the whole site there was probably a dozen but the, the actual area that I worked in day in day out days nights there were just two of us at the time and then that uh, the other person went on to a, a role in safety so um, that one's screen really quick. Did I lose? Huh. <sighs> Shouldn't have touched anything. Okay. Sorry. I just tried to get rid of a message on that popped up on the screen and uh, lost you guys, or I lost view of you guys. Um, so anyway, I, I was also fortunate enough to talk to some female technicians before applying for, to the job because they were really honest and said that in the middle of December, do you want to be outside? Do you want to be outside on a platform at 32 degrees trying to thaw out some equipment because you've got to thaw it out so that the unit keeps running because we produce a product 24 seven, if we're not producing that product, we're down and that costs the company money. So you, there's a lot of um, aspects of the job and with, with uh, continuous uh, innovation and improvements, technology, a lot of the things that I did 20 years ago isn't even an, an issue today because we make, it's also an opportunity to continue to improve improve your job as an operator, improve the process and the technology behind it, uh, the short startup and shutdown systems. You, you have a lot of voice as you learn to make suggestions for improvements. So now that 20, year, 20 plus years ago when I was up on a platform and it was cold and I had a steam hose in my line, in my hand, 
there was not even a need for that anymore because we made an improvement to run steam up to that instrument and to keep it warm during the winter months. So as time goes, the job actually gets, uh, there's just more innovation in the job. So not that it's easy, not that every day is uh, a cakewalk, but you can make improvements from a technology standpoint to um, be a part of engineering and some improvements to make your job, I guess, for lack of a better, better word, easier. Going back to working with mostly men in, a, in this field, um, I'm, I'm sure people have faced challenges with that. Like I said, I was very fortunate. The, the group of guys that I worked with were respectful. They were helpful, but I also had to do my part. I had to learn the job, learn it well, and to my best physical ability, execute that job. There were times if I needed help doing something outside that I couldn't physically do because of strength, I, I could easily ask for help and that was available to me, mostly because I was also willing to help when someone else needed it. If they were doing a, a, a task outside where it would be really nice to have another person help hook up hoses or to, um, to assist in some way, uh, even physically, like sometimes it would take two people to, to work on something to, to uh, have that uh, valve turn or to have a, something, you know, just a, a strength that, that if you don't have that on your own, if you're working with two people, or even if you get tired and take turns, you know, I was willing to help other people. So they were all, all, always willing to help me. And they didn't want me to get in a position where I could hurt myself. I don't want anybody else to ever be in a position where they could hurt themselves. So working together, um, male or female, is really important. But if you go in with the intent like, I need help with everything, there's gonna be a lack of respect. You wanna go in and learn the job and sometimes prove yourself that you, you are as smart, you are as capable, and if there are any physical limitations that you're not unwilling to ask for help because you don't wanna put yourself in a bind, you don't wanna get hurt, and, and in kind, you would want to be there and be available for your coworkers as well. I, I you know, some experience, uh, some, some people get more offended than others because I was in a, a respectful area, but I wasn't naive either. You know, I'm working with men. I didn't expect them to have proper vocabulary 24 seven. You know, I, I didn't grow up even in that environment. But if I, I, I could felt comfortable if they were maybe using language that I was uncomfortable with or making insinuations that I wasn't comfortable with, not towards me, but towards women in general, I could talk to them and say, hey, not cool, you know, just don't do that. You know, and some people raise that, uh, I think the environment even more and more today than 20 plus years ago, you know, in the last 10 years that I was there, we were getting respect and responsibility training. We were getting, um, uh, integration training and just uh, learn the value of working with, with folks that are different than ourselves, whether it be male, female, from different countries, different ethnic backgrounds. Um, we're a global com company and most companies are becoming global. So you can work with, with people, whether over the phone or they might have a, a, a stint in this country and you're working with them and to understand that we all bring value to our work regardless of gender, regardless of, of where we come from, or even our socioeconomic backgrounds. Are you rich? Do you come from a rich family, a poor family? We all have uh, something to offer, regardless of our differences. So in general, I would just say that uh, if you want to pursue this, there's, there's opportunities because the companies actually want to hire females. Not, not a bad position to be in because 90% of the people that apply are male, 10% are female, you have a much better chance when they are looking to uh, hire a wide demographic and they don't, you know, companies want to give opportunities uh, to females. They like to, you know, I'll just side caveat, caveat, caveat uh, a lot of feedback that I've gotten from uh, engineers and leaders is that females make really good board operators because we have a lot of attention to detail. Not that men aren't fantastic and do a great job at it, as well, but kind of a, that just uh, in general, kind of an attention to detail. Uh, 
is, is one thing that they've recognized as a strength. Like I said, we all have different strengths. We all have something to offer. And when we integrate and work together, it, it makes the company stronger. Um, one of the topics or like talking points is what did, what, I, what did I enjoy most about my job? And I, I will say it's just the, the technology and, and how the process works and the chemistry involved. And that leads to, you know, what academic knowledge do you need for this job? And I'm not sure where you guys are, if, if, if you're looking at high school and where in high school or, or what your opportunities are. But when you sit through a math class and say, I'll never use this, you definitely want solid basic math skills because it's just an asset to the job as far as you're looking at tank levels and you're looking at temperatures and uh, flows and different numbers. And then you can re better relate if you have those ma basic math skills with everything com computerized. You don't have to work out long uh, um, long complicated algebraic equations or anything like that. Most of that's done co computer, but you want some uh, basic knowledge because you need to do a logic check from time to time. Does that make sense? If I have to change something from one quantity to another, from metric to, to US uh, scale, does that make sense? So I wanna have some basic uh, skills and knowledge because computers aren't always right and things break. And you've got, if you have a, some a sound background, you're just going to be better off because you always are able to make a logic check because you're able to uh, kind of double check or if you do have to plug some numbers into a built-in electronic equation, you understand what you're putting in there and what it means. So math, uh, strong basic math skills, uh, any type of level of algebra, it does help because there are a lot of formulas. You don't have to memorize them all and know them all, but can you apply that? Can you put numbers into a formula that's already provided for you? Um, science, definitely chemistry and physics, you know, not Sheldon on the Big Bang, but some basic physics about how things work and uh, just uh, boiling points, pressures, uh, pressure and temperature, how that's related. So some of your basic science skills, uh, chemistry skills, organic chemistry, all of these raw materials come from the ground and there's carbon and hydrogen and it's, it, 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 it's amazing how what we bring up from the ground ends up as products that we use every day. So some chemistry, um, you know, your communication skills, be able to read and write. There's a lot of emails that go back and forth. You might be uh, required to, oh, I'm, I almost passed my time without uh, letting you guys have some opportunity to ask questions. And I uh, want to say at least one more thing before my time is totally up. Um, there's a lot of safety involved because you want to go to work safe, come home safe. Uh, those programs that we have, the two year program, uh, certification programs have a lot of safety uh, content in them. And also where you have process knowledge of, of equipment and some basic chemistry and math and all of that, another huge asset to bring to the table is interpersonal skills. You wanna be able to get along with people. You wanna be able to um, communicate with other folks. Teamwork's very important. You've gotta be able to, what I said, kinda of like I'll help I'll help you, I'm willing to help you because I know sometimes I'm going to need help as well and we're all stronger for working together. Teamwork, communication, leadership, I'm willing to take ownership and leadership of my job and not just depend on everybody else for the all the time or push my work off on someone else. You know, so those are, are very, very important attributes to bring to the table as well for whatever job or career you, you pursue. So, it's 2.30, sorry. Let me know if you have any questions. And I do wish you the best. Well, I appreciate your time. I mm -hmm. don't see any questions in the panel. Okay. Um, but we appreciate everything that you've brought to us, all the knowledge that you're sharing. Um, if anyone does have any feedback or any questions they'd like to ask at a later time, please feel free to email me and then I will relay those um, questions 
on to Stacy. Um, once again, thank you all for connecting. Thank you for um, being our presenter on our um, sound knowledge for process technician. And um, if they do want to get some information of what it's like to enroll in the program, I'll definitely forward that information along to you. All right, thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. You have a good afternoon. You too.